be said the lad did all right because you've got two Oscars <laughs> and a knighthood. Yeah, I have one Oscar. I have not noticed two does. One Oscar. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. I didn't want to come on actually. I was so fascinated watching these two. All right, do you want to go back and see? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's fascinating I, because uh, I, I, what are you saying about uh, you know how how you were matures and uh, mellows out as the years go by? I is just terrific. It's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Well, that I happened to you. Uh, th yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, me. well, but I'm getting older, and I feel much more mellow. But, but I mean, I, I was always thinking that, that when I did that interview with you, that in fact, I, well, I, when I did the interview, I thought I've done this interview before. But the name of the man was Richard Burton. Oh yes. But with Burton, I mean, he went over the edge, and you didn't. You pulled back. It was the same interview, in a sense, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, I suppose. Oh, you mean with Richard? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose, but yeah. It was. It was. The, look, it's the boy from from Wales. We came from the same town. The same town. Yes. Uh, you know, they conquered the stage. Yeah. Go to Hollywood, accusations of selling out and all yes. that sort of thing. The yes. booze. Yeah. But he went on the booze. And yes. he didn't. You pulled back. Well, I just thought it'd be smarter not to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had some fun with it, but uh, it, it finally burnt me out, so I stopped. Let's talk about now. Let's talk about America now, because yes. you're settled there now. And uh, the yes. films are kind of queuing up. You've got, I think, three waiting for release at present. That's right. I've got Zorro, A Mask of Zorro, in which I play, actually play Zorro, believe it or not, with Antonio Banderas. And uh, waiting, uh, meeting jo meet Joe Black with um, Brad Pitt. And what else? Amistad uh, with uh, Steven Spielberg. And uh, The Edge, which that, comes out soon. Four. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you... uh, then I, then I, I've got one coming up in January, so I start next week in May. And I mean, do you get time to see these movies ever? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I get a look at them. You and do, uh, yeah. one viewing is enough, and uh, <laughs> cancel and move on. You know? Is it, it would, would it I be wrong in thinking that? that for all you've been an actor all your life, that if it wasn't for movies, you wouldn't be an actor? I think so. I was brought up, I was raised on uh, uh, you know, the movies during the war years. My parents used to take me to the Plaza Cinema in uh, Port Albert or the Odeon or wherever. We had five cinemas in a relatively small town. And I used to go and see all the Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney movies. And that's where uh, lots of kids of my generation uh, got their entertainment. And uh, eventually, because my, I had nothing better to do, I became an actor because I was so stupid at school. <laughs> and I was a slow student, you know. And my, my father uh, suggested that I join the YMCA, and that's how, where I started, Port Albert, 1955. I wanted instant stardom, but uh, it took a long, <laughs> long time. I simply wanted to... I remember meeting Richard Burton, and uh, he signed an autograph for me. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> I was so impressed because he was, in, he was home from Hollywood with his wife, not to Elizabeth Taylor, his first wife. And I remember him signing the autograph. And he was on his way to Carter Farms Park to see the big international between England and Wales. Anyway, I was walking down the street afterwards, clutching my autograph. And uh, he passed in the car and Sybil waved to me, you know, his wife. And I remember thinking that moment, I thought, I've got to get out of here. I don't mean out of Wales, but I thought, I've got to get out of my own situation. I want to become famous. And uh, I did. That's what I wanted to become. And uh, that was a long time ago. I was about 15 at the time. And through some strange destiny, it's all luck, some strange quirk of destiny, uh, I found myself moving towards the acting business. I went into the theatre. I was very lucky, tremendously lucky, most fortunate. I've been very blessed. I worked with great people like Laurence Olivia at the National Theatre. Sure. But I really had my eye on the main chance. I really wanted to be in movies. I, I loved movies, and I love doing them now. I'm afraid I'm not very good in the theatre. I get very restless. That's a nonsense. Well, I just Anybody who saw you do Lamb of the Rue in, in Pravda. I mean, that was you're... a lot of fun. But fun? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing Lamb of the Rue, yes. the Rue was, yeah. was fun. Yeah, but it was, it was a little... Uh, I, I got restless. Maybe I'll go back to the theatre one day, I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm enjoying my life now. Doing what I do. You said something very interesting once in an interview about your father. You said you were dangerous together. My father and I, yeah, he was an amazing man and uh, he was a baker and he was, I think, a frustrated actor, a frustrated story. He was a great storyteller, <laughs> like Paul, a wonderful <laughs> improviser. He ended up running a pub and people flocked from all over Wales to come and see him. He's known as Dick the Ship. <laughs> and the stories. And we used to do a double act with Tommy Cooper together behind the bar. And he was an extraordinary man. And uh, he was a very meat and potatoes man, very down to earth. And when I was working at the National Theatre, he said, You don't want to hang around here, you know, you want to make money like Richard Burton. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing a, I was doing a play at the National Theatre with Joan Plowright and uh, Lawrence. And uh, anyway, they were in the dressing room afterwards. And um, 
Laurence Olivier knocked the door and came in. And my father went a very funny colour, and so did my mother. <laughs> so I said, this is Sir Laurence Olivier. He said, hello, Mr. Hopkins, hi. And um, my father said, uh, how old are you now, then? He <laughs> <laughs> was like, built like a bull. And he said, how old are you? And uh, Laurence Olivier said, I was born in 1907. Same age as me, both going down the bloody hill now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've, I've had interviews in papers and the people say, oh, and I've been misquoted, saying I had a miserable childhood. I didn't. I had an idyllic childhood. Yes. The only time was when I was in school, I was um, not very bright. And so I felt very lonely. That was the only time. But I had a wonderful childhood and great parents. Do you think of your father often now? All the time. Yes. And as I get older, he's becoming me. I'm him. Yeah. I, I remember I used to play the piano a lot. I was a little artist. I used to play Beethoven and all that stuff, you know, and Chopin and all that. And uh, he was a baker, and he used to ask me to come and help him in the shop, carry the cakes into the shop during school holidays. Well, I'd sort of get distracted. And I remember sitting at the top of the house where this piano was, and I remember him coming up to the stage. He said, for God's sake, he said, I asked you to take those donuts into the shop. What the hell are you doing up here? I was playing the piano. He said, what's that you're playing? I remember him standing in the doorway, and he had flower dust in the hair and his arms, you know, really hard worker. He said, what are you playing? I said, Beethoven. He said, no wonder you went deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'll never forget that because it, it's, it's come alive in me because I'm afraid I, I don't have much time for the acting. I mean, I was yesterday, I was at an entertainment thing with uh, doing atomical breathing and uh, light entertainment and all that. And I love comedians and I love uh, entertainers. And the acting profession gets a little bit stiff and starchy. And I think my father's coming alive with me now. It's, uh, I'm a bit irreverent about it. Before we explore that, did you ever use your father in any part you played? Most of the time, Lambert Larue. Lambert Larue. Parts well, of well, the him, way I he think. stood. Well, my father's a very. No, he wasn't aggressive. He said he was a bullish. Bullish. Yes, you're a bullish man. Yes. And so was my grandfather. Basically, basically, on my grandfather, really, on my father's side of the family. But yes, I, I, um, I'm built like him. I act like him. I uh, have the same. I saw, saw a photograph of myself in a magazine recently. I thought it was my father. I think as we get older, we will become closer to him. I yes. remember reading about your father and uh, your relationship. Yes, I was very close to him. That's, That's an amazing story. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, right. It's extraordinary. And then, again, like you, the older I get, the more I think about, about yeah. what you learn from them. What and, you learn from them. I think we learn the best part from them. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. Let's talk about Tommy Cooper. Because, <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I mean, I, I just my, it was my favourite, my all-time favourite. Yeah. Well, before we talk about it specifically, you said something interesting there, which other actors have said, which is that you, you admire comedians. And a lot of actors do. I mm. mean, Trevor Howard, I remember once when Tommy Cooper was on the show, rang up and begged to be in the audience to watch him. Um, and I said, why? I said, because he's a great actor, he said. Yeah. Um, what is it, though? Well, Paul, you're a great fan of Tommy Cooper. Mm, yes, indeed. He's I, wonderful. I guess he, he was an anarchist. He was uh, uh, a complete anarchist. I mean, I was watching a tape of him yesterday. I mean, uh, the, I, mean he, I think he had the genius of recognising his own body, those huge feet. He's about six feet five, wasn't he? And the awkwardness of him, and he was a very vulnerable fool. I mean, he was an idiot. I mean, he was a wonderful fool, like Eric Morecambe was, and I think Les Dawson was a wonderful fool, and all his tricks went wrong. I think um, they say he was just a hit-and-miss comedian. I think he was a brilliantly, technically accomplished comedian. There is some story, I think, I, I don't know if it's true, and I heard this years ago, that he was playing um, uh, Los Angeles or America, a Hilton Hotel somewhere, I think it was L.A., and he was booked for two weeks. This would be sometime in the late 50s. And uh, after a couple of uh, evenings, um, the management called him in and said, Look, we have to speak to you, Mr. Cooper. And he said, well, what's the matter? You know, and he said, um, we think you should rehearse more. <laughs> <laughs> because the same trick went wrong tonight <laughs> as did last night. Do, do you know when we speak? No. No, he, was, uh, he, didn't, he didn't cross the Atlantic at all. No. <laughs> Except in his dreams. Very British humour. He was it? very British humour. He was a great, great drawl, a great, a great yeah. comedian. Um, and uh, you, you, you went, what was this, you were at this, this was doing, a, what were you doing? Was it Tommy I Cooper I promised my wife I wouldn't do any Tommy Cooper. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Nonsense. I was hosting this show last night. It was, uh, and uh, Sting was there and uh, a whole bunch of people and uh, um, Warren Mitchell. Anyway, so I was asked to host the evening and uh, Ned Sheeran introduced me. And so I had to get up with the fairs and... Uh, so I love that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, I, I, I said, I, I feel very silly up here. I'm supposed to be a serious actor. I'm not up there. <laughs> so I said, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the butcher. 
I swear you were. I said, lean back. I said, no, no. I backed a horse yesterday. <laughs> 20 to 1. I came in 20 past 4. <laughs> <laughs> I came in so late and had a tiptoe back to the state. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the doctor. <laughs> I went to the doctor, he said, what's the matter? I said, I'm not feeling good. He said, get up on the table, it's what for? He said, I want to sweep up. <laughs> <laughs> so he examined me all over. Do you like that? <laughs> examined me all over. And when I came out of the changing room, he was looking very sad. I said, give me the worst. <laughs> he said, well, let's put it like this. Don't put on any long playing records. <laughs> 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 There's, uh, there's an, an actor, like there's a, an actor friend of mine, I haven't seen him for years, is Mike Gambon. He reminds oh, me of Michael a, Gambon. a great actor. Yes. And I think he's Sir that Michael guy. Now. Sir Michael Gambon. Indeed. I think he's that kind of an anarchist that makes him a great actor. Yes. Yes. And he's got a great physical resemblance. He could play Tommy yeah. Cooper, couldn't he? He could. And no, I think it's his great genius, is his uh, anarchy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's in the final moment we've got now, just a couple of things. America, you're enjoying. I love it. I, I don't, I've got a house there in, yeah. in California, but I also live here. Do you also, I, I read, there's a way of relaxing there. You just take off and, and just drive around the country. Thousands side. of miles. Do you? Yeah. Drive, uh, yes, yeah, so wherever, wherever my instinct takes me, I'll make one direction and I end up in Texas and not really. I have a map with me, but uh, sometimes I'll change. I think, I think I'll go right and I end up in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I was down in Texas last year and it was so flat, I thought, this is very boring. <laughs> so I turned left and went up to Alaska, uh, up to uh, Washington. And I, I have a wonderful I'm actually going into a hotel in El Paso. It was a holiday, and it was under a freeway, just on the very gloomy, miserable night it was. It was raining. And I went to this hotel. I needed accommodation. I walked in, and it was very gloomy. And I walked in, and there was this uh, woman behind the desk, and she had a scarf and with curlers and, you know, grips. And, and I said, could I have a room? She said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a lot of fun meeting a lot of people. <laughs> it's a way of relaxing. Yeah. It's like yeah. bitter on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't... I, can play a dog in... I can play a dog in the phone. All right, you're on. Doberman. <laughs> ah, yeah. I was going to ask if you get a part in. Yeah. So, final question to all three, because what's been fascinating talking to all three of you tonight is that all three of you came from the same kind of background. Uh, and, you know, where, where you weren't allowed to be what you are, in a sense. And you dreamed, and you became what you are. Um, and you succeeded. Uh, do, do you think that it's all been... Is it a dream? Are they going to tap me on the shoulder, Paul Merton, one day and say, your time's up, Merton, actually? No, I don't, I, no, I don't, I don't feel that. I, know, I think some people do. I think that's quite a common thing with people in show business. But no, I sort of... It took a long... It was a long, slow climb, and I hope it to be a long, slow descent. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, what about Ditto. you? <laughs> Ditto. 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 Same as. Same thing. If it went someplace, I would look back and say, what a great ride that's <laughs> been. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony. Yeah, I've uh, had a wonderful life, and uh, I hope it goes on. Um, I'm very fortunate, very lucky. I sometimes pinch myself and think, how did it happen? But I think, well, you know, that's the way it is. It's an opportunity, luck, and goodness knows what it is. Maybe a little bit of talent. But I've, I, I've, I've had such a wonderful life, and... Uh, uh, what I'm enjoying now is just getting older. That's what I'm really enjoying. I just you enjoy my that, 60th yeah? birthday, yeah. yeah. I just feel everything's mellowed out a bit. I'm not that concerned about things anymore. I'm just having a good time and... Uh... Isn't it nice to tell people to... Tears. ...go away, if you don't like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say something vulgar, but I wouldn't... But, but, and, and choose your friends. Yeah. Right? Just, and I do a... what you want to do. Exactly. I had a party the other night. It was the 31st... Uh, uh, the 60th birthday party. And a lot of friends I hadn't seen for many years came by. Uh, actors, and uh, it was wonderful to see that we're all getting older and we've all mellowed a bit more, and there's not all that competition and striving, all that, which is great. All that testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank all of you, too, for coming on the show, but uh, thank you. Thanks thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> nice show. They're going to be smiling as they come.